I want to take us today to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5 and these are words which we know very well. Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Now we know these words well because the Lord Jesus uses them as recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. Jesus describes these words of God as the most important commandment. So it's no exaggeration to describe these words as highly significant for us as well as for God's Old Testament people. Here in Deuteronomy, we're at the end of the 40 years of wilderness wanderings. Very soon, the people of Israel were going to be crossing the River Jordan under Joshua's leadership and entering the Promised Land. Moses is passing on to the people God's instructions to them. In the previous chapter, he has reminded them of the Ten Commandments that God gave to the people uh, those 40 years earlier, just after they'd left Egypt. And now Moses is saying, in effect, listen up, everybody. What I'm going to say now is of extreme importance. Hear, O Israel. It's as if these words come to us in large capitals, in bold, underlined, and underlined many times. Here are three things for us to notice about these words. First, what we're told about God. He is the Lord. The word comes twice here. Lord, in capital letters, stands for God's personal name, which we sometimes render as Yahweh or Jehovah. The name is closely linked with the covenant that God has made for his people. He has rescued them or redeemed them from slavery in Egypt to be his people. He says to them, I am your God, you are my people. And that's why in this verse, Moses says, the Lord, our God, the people belong to him. And it's all to do with God's grace, his love. They don't deserve it any more than we deserve to have our sins forgiven and to be made his people. They couldn't rescue themselves any more than we could rescue ourselves. Only God could bring the people out of slavery in Egypt and across the Red Sea. Only God can bring us out of the slavery of sin and cause us to be born again. Also, God is described here as one. The Lord is one. There is only one God. The so-called gods of pagan nations are no gods. And the phrase tells us that he is the Lord alone. There is no one like him. He is incomparable. Second, what we are to do? We are to love the Lord our God. Isn't that an amazing word to use? Through Moses, God has been giving the people all sorts of instructions, not least the Ten Commandments. Here are things that they are to do. But when it comes to the great commandment, the most important commandment, it is to love God. And that again speaks of relationship. Yes, the relationship is of the Lord and his servants. But also there's a pointer here towards the relationship being that of father and children. Of course, it's only with Jesus coming to earth and bringing in the new covenant that we really understand that the Holy God can be our heavenly Father. What's going to motivate the people of Israel to obey God? What motivates us as those who live under the new covenant to obey the Lord our God? The answer is loving him motivates obedience. The people then could look back at the Exodus and say, wow, how God has loved us. He's done all this for us, rescuing us from slavery, making, his, making us his people, giving us a future in the promised land. Yes, we will love him and obey him. And we today can look back at the cross and say, wow, how God has loved us. He's done all this for us. He's given us his own son to die for us. He has rescued us from the slavery of sin. He has made us his people. He's made us his sons and his daughters. He has given us a future to look forward to, heaven to come. Yes, we will love him and obey him. And third, how we are to love him. With all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. 
There aren't meant to be significant differences between the three words used. All of them refer to the whole of us. Now, sure, we realise that heart doesn't just mean our feelings. It's far deeper than that. It's what we would call our mind or our will. I've recently discovered that the Hebrew word used here for might is the word which is also used for very, as in very big. So we could translate that last bit of the verse as with all your veryness, except it doesn't really sound quite right. But it does point to the thrust of the command. We're to love the Lord our God to our full capacity in a very way. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might.